Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. And I received this beast on Tuesday. It's a laptop made by a company you might not have heard of called Juno Computers. They operate out of London in the UK and much like Tuxedo or Slimbook, they provide laptops and desktops pre-installed with Linux. So let's take a look at my first impressions on this machine. So this one here is the Neptune 15. It's a 15.6 inch laptop with a full HD IPS panel running at 144 Hz. It's all made out of black aluminium and it's pretty lightweight for the power it packs. It is 4.4 pounds or 2 kilos for something that packs an Intel Core i7 10th gen with 8 cores and 16 threads, an RTX 2060 with 6 gigabytes of memory and 16 gigabytes of RAM. My test unit came with 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, but you can really configure that machine up. The website lets you tailor it until you can reach an RTX 2080 Super Max Q with 8 gigabytes of memory. You can go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and can also install up to 4 terabytes of SSD storage in it. And the chassis doesn't change. It's the same weight, which is absolutely incredible. So they also have multiple keyboard options. Mine came with a US QWERTY keyboard, but you could get a bunch of other layouts as well. The I.O. is pretty excellent. On the left side, you've got a micro SD card slot, a USB-A port, a headset and a microphone jack. On the right side, you have two more USB-A and an Ethernet port. And on the back, a mini display port, an HDMI port, the plug for the barrel charger and a Thunderbolt 3 port for data, but not for charging. Now this port here didn't seem to be recognized by GNOME for me. Uh, it said that uh, Thunderbolt 3 was not active, but maybe it needs to be plugged in for it to work. Or maybe it's just a driver issue. I have to try and find a Thunderbolt 3 device to make that work. Okay, so now that the machine is out of the box, I've had a few days to play with it. And here are my first impressions. So first, the panel. It's really good. It doesn't go ultra bright and it's only a full HD panel, but the IPS viewing angles are fantastic. You can turn this thing around and there is no color shifting at all. You can really see it even from any angle. And it's a matte display, which means that reflections on this thing do not exist. Even in plain sunlight, you can basically see everything that you're doing, which is pretty freaking awesome. And the 144 Hertz refresh rate, I was in the camp of that's really not super useful on a laptop and I really didn't really care about it, but honestly you can tell the difference and I didn't think you could, but you can. So the webcam is also pretty standard. At 720p there's nothing special, you won't look like a potato during your video conferences, but it's nothing to write home about. So I thought maybe the power button would double as a fingerprint scanner, but it doesn't seem to be the case. You still get a full-size keyboard with a number pad and more importantly for some people, RGB. You can tweak the backlight to whatever color you want and Juno computers include a small utility in the top bar to let you tweak that. So by the way, there is another utility in the top bar that lets you change the fan speed and you can also switch from Intel to Nvidia to Nvidia on demand modes in the uh, power indicator up top. And uh, this might pair very well with the GNOME ability to launch an app using the dedicated GPU just by right clicking it on the app grid. Other than that, the Ubuntu install is a pretty much stock OEM install of Ubuntu 20.04, nothing special here. Drivers are up to date, even the Nvidia drivers. So the build quality here is really nice. Thanks to the black aluminum, it doesn't creak much, it doesn't move much, there is not much flex. The only time where you can see a flex is on the top panel when you push down on it, where you can see that the top panel is uh, just a little bit uh, wobbly. And uh, on the keyboard, when you type, you'll definitely see some wobble in the middle. Uh, you'll see some flex and some give uh, towards the middle keys. And that's definitely something I wouldn't be worried about, but I would prefer if it wasn't there. The keyboard in itself, though, is pretty good. There is a good amount of key travel. The sound is muffled and not too clicky. And the typing experience is generally pretty good. I'm not a big fan of the font used on the keyboard, but that's pretty much a nitpick. And the RGB lighting option is definitely not for me, but it might be for some other people. The only thing it's lacking maybe is a little bit of bounce back. I feel the keys take a little bit too much time to travel back up. They're a little bit too mushy for my taste. But uh, honestly, it's a good typing experience. Now, the Windows key on the keyboard, though, I could have done without. Uh, when you're making Linux computers, machines running Linux by default, you are going to sell them to people using Linux. And so going the extra effort to remove the Windows key and replace it with something, maybe, I don't know, a Juno Computers logo or something just written super on it or an Ubuntu logo would have been pretty nice. I'm pretty sure it's doable. Uh, it might take some extra time and energy and maybe a little bit of extra money, but that's something that I would have liked to see here.
Now we can finish this tool with the trackpad and it is excellent. It seems to be glass because it's extremely smooth and uh, I think with some gestures on that it's just gonna fly. The size is just right for me. Uh, the pointer just flies. It's super precise. Uh, I haven't felt uh, this precise with a trackpad since I've used a Mac so basically it's a very good trackpad and uh, yeah two finger scrolling works and I'm probably sure you can install gestures on this. I will need to try that for the full-on review. The only thing I don't like is the two button layout. Uh, I've gotten used to a fully clicky one block trackpad and having two buttons on the bottom is just weird for me. It feels like a throwback to olden days and I would have preferred to have just a massive clicky trackpad with two finger clicking uh, to do a right click. But some people might prefer this layout so that's just a matter of personal preference. So who is this laptop for? Well it's probably for people like me who are using Linux and who are trying to do some creative stuff. It's good enough for 3D rendering, it's good enough for video recording and rendering as well, video editing, and yeah it's probably something that any creator using Linux might want to check out. It is also a dream gaming laptop. I mean, it doesn't have all the crazy gamer looks that you can get with all the RGB and the aggressive lines and the logos that look like sport cars, which look horrible to me. I, I just hate that look. And so yeah, it looks professional, it looks cool, but it's powerful. And uh, you are going to be able to game on that because, we, well, with the Full HD panel, which is largely enough on a 15-inch screen, let's be honest, you're going to be able to use the RTX 2060 or anything that you configure upwards from that to drive any games at 144Hz or probably very easily that with good graphics details. So I'm going to use this laptop exclusively for the next weeks or so uh, before I need to send it back and uh, I'm going to do a full review. So I'm going to use it at work for my day job as a product owner. I'm going to use it to edit and render videos, to record the videos themselves when I need to do screencasts, to edit them, to transfer the footage, everything. I'm just going to leave my desktop turned off and I'm even going to play the games that I play on this every day. So we're going to see how it goes and I'm going to make a full video review about this laptop uh, maybe at the beginning of November. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. If you want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members by clicking the links in the description below and getting access to a monthly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next video topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!